Hi, my name is Eric Steele with New Wire Marine, and today we're going to be building an example switch panel using our ePanel Builder tool, our new tool that allows you to design, simulate, and order a custom switch panel right online. The first thing I want to point out once you get to the product is the five steps across the top from start to completion are the five steps that will progress through um, to, spec to spec all the different aspects of your switch panel. The first step is size. We have three fields here, a width, a height, and a number of rows. So let's just start just by entering, say, 10 inches wide and 14 inches high. And we want two rows. Say, maybe on, for this panel we're going to put a couple of gauges up top and the switches down below. So you can see once you've entered these three fields, the shape of the panel is rendered. You can see the two blank rows appear where we're going to eventually be adding components. Now we'll progress to step two by clicking next step. Step two is the color and you can click any of these options to simulate the color. There's white carbon fiber, black carbon fiber, matte black, and we'll come back to this step after a while and simulate it after we've got the components loaded to give you a more accurate representation. So we'll just proceed on by clicking next step again. Now in step three is where you start adding components to your panel. You can see there's a left hand navigation menu and I'll kind of go through each one of these. The, the most common is rocker switches. Right? So we have three main types of switches, our backlit style, backlit with breaker. So these are going to be the same options with a circuit breaker below because that's a very common option. We have blue lens contour twos, blue lens with breakers, red lens contour twos, and red with breakers. And we can also add holes. So we've got a bunch of standard ignition and kill switch holes, gauge holes, and switch holes because you can even make a blank panel using this tool. We have a number of accessories loaded and we're adding them all the time. So, so check check back, there may be even more available. But the accessories are things like 12 volt sockets and, and, and a circuit breaker by itself. And then the last category we have right now is blank spaces, which allows you to arrange your components on the panel. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. But for now, let's just start adding some switches. So let's add an accessory, a bilge, courtesy lights, Maybe a live well, navigation lights, and you don't you can't see it behind the menu, but they're they're being added to the panel as you select them. Maybe one more. And underwater lights. Okay. So you can see they've been added to the panel here, and you can drag and drop them to the position of your choice. Now remember we want to put gauges up at the top, so the second row is still empty, so I'm going to drag a component down and populate the second row. Just move all the switches down here. And now the first row goes empty. Now these rows are dynamic, so they automatically change in height depending on the components that you place within them. So remember we were going to add some gauge holes. So let's say we've got a tack and a speedometer that we're going to put up at the top. Once you have all your components added, then you can start manipulating the placement of them on the, on the drawing. We have a toolbar across the top that allows you to do several things. Distribute, we always recommend, and it symmetrically distributes the components across the panel so it looks nice and even. When you toggle the zoom function on, you can hover over any component and read it. So if it gets a little small and you can't read it, zoom will allow you to check which label is which. Delete allows you to delete components. So you can see the little deletion X pops up and you can click on, click on that to remove it. I'll remove accessory. Show dimensions toggle puts crosshairs along the panel where you can align and place and measure your components where they're going to be on the final product. We also have a field where you can adjust the space between rows. So in this particular case, our switch panel looks a little strange with all this blank space at the top and bottom. So instead of half an inch, let's try an inch and a half or maybe even three inches and turn distribute on to see how it's going to look. And now that's starting to look a little better. So just as an example of how you can go back to previous steps, I'm going to set this space between rows back to 
and say we wanted to add a row in the center. So we want to put some more components so the switch panel doesn't look as odd from having all the space in between the various components. So I'll change this to 3, hit enter, and now the third row has appeared. So let's go back over to components. We can bring our switches down to the third row. Put them back in the order that we want them. I forgot to add that accessory switch back in. See, it appears the switches will always appear in the top row to the right if they'll fit. So we'll drag them down here, accessory, realign them in the order that we want. And let's add some accessories in the center row. So we'll put a 12 volt plug and a USB charger. So we'll click distribute to see how it looks. Now this looks a little sp funny. We should probably add some space between the rows, separate those out. Another thing to point out is you, you can't drag and drop the components while distribute is on. You get a little error message. So just turn off distribute and then you can move the components around again. So let's add a horn switch, a red horn. It's often, oh, we need one with a breaker. So horn switches are often red and, and at a different location. So maybe that would look fine up here on the second row. And then I want to push all these components over to the right. So I'm going to add some blank spaces. You can add 2 inch, 2 inch, until you can't add anymore. OK. So we've got our 1 inch and 2 inch spaces in here. Let me see if I can drag this 1 inch down into that row. We can't. So I'm going to delete it. And I don't want that one down there. So we'll go back and add a half inch. So now we have this row filled up with blank spaces, so we wanted them over to the right, so I'm going to move the blank spaces over and click Distribute. Now, we've got just what we wanted. We've got the gauges up at the top, a blank space if we wanted to cut something in, a trim tab controller or something like that. Maybe we can fiddle with the space between the rows a little bit more, but I think it looks good around there. So let's proceed on to the next step by clicking Next Step. Now we're at the Wiring Options section. So you can pick, choose from Fully Wired, Jumpers Only, No Wiring. We have descriptions of what these packages include in our Resources section. Down here we've got several toggles, and if you get confused, there are helpful little reminders under the question marks if you hover over them. So what you do is use this section to specify how you want the panel wired. So let's say you want jumpers only, you want heat shrink, you want us to drill mounting holes, which is means we'll add the holes around the perimeter of the panel. You do want gaskets. And PDF proof for comment is something where if you have changes to the panel that you're not able to do within the confines of the ePanel builder, which really tries to tries to force symmetry and force you to create a, a nice looking panel. But along with that helpfulness also comes some lack of options. So, so clicking this button means instead of going right into production, we have a designer take a look at your product before it goes into production and make whatever changes you type into the comments for a production box. Now you can't use this to add scope to the project. You know, you can't say add three more switches in there because that would have impacted the price, which is constantly being adjusted up here. If you have any questions about whether your comments for production have a scope impact to the price of the final project, then give us a shout. We'll, we'd be happy to, to help you with that. If, if it does, then we do have a catch-all field down here, and you probably would never use this unless you've talked to a representative here, but there is a way for you to add a certain amount of cost so that we can we can make minor adjustments to it without having to come back and re-invoice re you. So the next step is the final step to order. Click Next Step one more time. And I forgot, I promised we were going to go back and play with the color. So let me just real quick jump back to step two and change the color. What, after your components are in it, you get a, you know, a better rendering of it, of what the final product would look like, you know, more than just a blank panel. So it's nice to go back and, and play around with the, the different options of that step. So we'll jump back for, forward to order, and now you can see I'm not logged in here. So I've only got two options. I can start over, which means I'll lose all this. I'll start from a clean design or I can log in to save. 
Now we do require an account being created on our website in order to save a panel. We have to have a, a name to save it under. So we've already created a demo account to use. If you didn't have an account, then you'd have you'd need to sign up for one here. So we've logged in, we've been redirected to step five, and you you can see we have more options now here. We can save this panel for later, in which you'll save it under a name, or we can view our saved panels, and you can see I've got a number of saved panels here. Or you can save it and add it to cart. So I'm going to do that now. We're going to title the design, we'll call it Demo Project 2. Okay, and you see it's been added to the cart, Demo Project 2. And you can view your cart now and check out just like any normal e-commerce experience. Or you can come back to the ePanel Builder and click Start Over to start designing a second panel. And that brings you back to step one. Before we end this demonstration today, I'm going to show you one more neat feature which is in my account. If Once you're logged in, if you've designed some ePanels, you can navigate to your account dashboard. In the dashboard, we have a tab called Switch Panels. And if you click that, you can see all the ePanels that are saved under your account. And you can delete them using the little trash can icon, or you can clone them using the clone icon. And just for a demonstration, we'll clone this test panel 3. And this is a small little panel that we had previously designed and you know it was a, a very simple one but you can go back to components and change it around then back to step five fly out the menu and save it under a new name demo panel three and since we didn't add it to the cart it's just saved for later and you can still view it in your account. Demo panel three. Well, that's all we've got for you today. Please check out our other videos and really appreciate you watching. And let us know if you have any questions.